Hello, and welcome back. This is the tournament finals match from the live Super Blitz tournament of Through the Ages that we held back in March. Now, this tournament was streamed with All American DJ Parson commentating it. So far, we've watched Payata win a match in the first round and Deluxe win a match in the second round. Both of those matches are available here on the channel, so check those out if you haven't. Now we're going to see them uh, play each other in the finals match. So grab a drink, get a snack, sit back and enjoy. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you here next time for matches from the second tournament. Now let's get into it. Okay, we're back. And we should be just about ready to go. Yeah, let's get this final started on the Saturday evening. Hope you guys are all doing well at home. Enjoyed those first two games. Really amazing, the last one. That was a really cool game. Um, I think the next one might even be better. We're going to see Payada against Deluxe again. So two players we have already seen matching up against each other. Let us know in the chat who do you think is going to win it. Yeah, let's... See, see predictions. Who is They're bold enough fun. to predict Deluxe? I'm going to see it. <laughs> and Josh does root for Deluxe after such a nice comeback. I guess you really fan favorite now. And there we have it. We are starting. Okay. Let's... Who has the first turn? Looks like... Payada does. Yeah, that has the first turn. All right, here we go. Are you going to grab a screenshot again? Yeah, definitely. Got the end. We have PS, and can we get some PS in the chat, maybe? So we have Pierre, we have Janzitska. So the first Janzitska game and the first Pierre game. Um, still don't have International Red Cross. Matimechi Castle, Transcontinental Railroad. Yeah, Payada being very thorough, looking through all the cards. Pyramids, Realm Roads. I think his first turn he can grab Engineering Genius. Uh, so I definitely think he will do that. And looks like he does exactly that. Yeah, not a lot else you can do. And yeah. interestingly, we had a similar decision. And now Lux can go for that Roman Roads. That's a yeah. very similar looking uh, board. I, th it was, I think the leaders were different, but it was very similar. Yeah. Don't worry, Stasi. I have that screenshot. No worries. <laughs> this is going <laughs> Yeah. So let's see what Payada. He just gonna go for Homer and uh, choices between Homer, Confucius, and Caesar. But yeah, Homer now is better than Caesar later, I guess. Um, counting cards again. He definitely, yeah, probably wants to see how he can get those pyramids. And I think he can grab that next turn for one, which is going to be great for him. It's a really great way to show how these great players are thinking. The Pajada always counting cards, doing every turn in similar ways, looking a lot at the different leaders and wonders to plan a strategy. Mm -hmm. He used every second of his turn right there. That was, yeah. That was neat. So Deluxe also goes for the mine, increasing population. He doesn't have a leader, um, which is always a problem. If you don't have the leader, um, you have to take some of these HA yellow cards, which are really bad, like taking Urban Growth A for two selections. Uh, if you do other stuff this turn, you can then get um, H1 yellow cards and get double the resources from those. So you really want to grab as few card of, cards of those uh, as you can and use the civil actions on those things you have to do eventually anyway. Yeah. 
as an expensive urban growth. Yeah, definitely. And we have another fan of Deluxe in the game, in the chat. So a lot of people rooting for Deluxe. Probably the underdog now. Um, but he was the underdog for a lot of the game last uh, last game. And had that great comeback in the end. So really well done by him. You have to like rooting for an underdog. Yeah. Empeyada thinking about Colossus, it seems. What do you think about Colossus after the buff from the expansion? Is it better now than Pyramids? It seems like uh, he's struggling to pick one of those two. I would not say it's better than Pyramids. The, see, I don't, I don't like playing with Pyramids, though, personally. It's good, but it's just kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> so you d just don't like uh, Civil Actions? They are, I mean, they are boring in this I, game, you don't need them? I guess. It's just Colossus. You get to... You know, you get these surprise cards every age, and it's yeah. fun. Um, Colossus is more fun than Pyramids, yeah? I think yeah. that's true. It might not be better, but it's more fun. I, I always find myself a little bit um, frustrated, sort of the wrong word, but when the age turns over and someone else has Colossus and they draw cards, I, always, <laughs> yeah. I never like that very much. Especially at the beginning of H3, where you're struggling to draw all these nice impacts and then they get three for free. Right. You're like, uh, I really would like those, but uh, he gets uh, to choose ex uh, immediately what he wants to go for with those impacts he, he maybe has drawn. All those wars, which are really important to draw. And now Deluxe um, wants to go for Caesar, needs a leader definitely. We have Genghis Khan in the match, so maybe drawing some more cards, getting that uh, heavy cavalry. Um, but of course, with the Zitzka in the game, deciding too early what leader you want to take. It feels a little bit nowadays, people are really adjusting to the Zitzka. Mm -hmm. um, feels a little bit like the earlier, um, like the pre-expansion uh, Napoleon. A lot of it in two play games comes down to who gets it and who grabs something first, so he's out of the race to get Zitzka. I don't think he's as strong as Napoleon used to be. Maybe yeah. that's. Uh, yeah. Doesn't seem like. Definitely, definitely a nice position the meta game is in now. At the moment, Zitzka is really in favor of a lot of players. In the beginning, a lot of people. Didn't like him as much, so a lot of people coming around to really prefer him over a lot of other leaders. And he's definitely one of the strongest, I think. Probably the strongest from H1, and from a power level, he's, he, may, he might be the strongest leader overall in the game at the moment. Like if you adjust it to the different ages. Melrus is right that I have some FOMO, though. On Colossus. Yeah, the FOMO on Colossus. What does uh, Zitzka do specifically? Um, Zitzka has a lot of different abilities. Gives you one military action. And you can use farms as um, infantry or artillery for tactics. So if you have like two warriors and two farms. You can play the legion and then basically the farm counts as one infantry so you have four. Um, and then he also gives culture for each tactic that you fulfill. So he's a great leader with a lot of range, a lot of different stuff you can do with him. And Fivek also a fan of Deluxe. We have a lot of Deluxe fans. Really great to see. So the Himeji Castle showed up. That's going to be available next turn, I guess. For either of these guys. Fiala wants that iron can play cultural influence, uh, cultural heritage, and upgrade to iron. 
and denies the other iron uh, would be a lot cleaner if you took the first iron and then could increase um, two mines. So you might think about taking that instead. But of course, there's always merit to denying takes from the other guy. And the Lux also has rich land in hand. Has irrigation for that, but still denying iron is probably really strong. Mm -hmm. So again, counting cards, seeing where stuff will lie. So he might get the Magic Castle next turn. Um, the Lux can't take that because he has to finish his uh, Roman Roads first. So Priyada, again, good position for him with the early iron, no iron for green. I think with the Lux having that Roman Roads, he's going to have four resource reduction anyway, so maybe doesn't need iron as much. Um, but yeah, Priyada is going to get the Magic Castle. That's going to be really strong for him. Yeah, depending on the you know the number of players and such, I, I find that I'm often pushing Roman roads into coal, essentially. Or at least trying yeah. to do that. Yeah, of course, the problem to play games, there's only one coal. Yep. Exactly. So, and then you rely a lot on the extra resources from the Roman roads. And then after the age, it only gives science. Or not only, but then you're still missing the resource production that you would really like. So, yeah, getting that coal would be really great if you don't get iron. And, Zitzka and there's Zitzka. Zitzka is here for three. That is always nice. If they come out for three, and then the, it's a little bit balanced out. They're so strong, but if you pay three for them, it's not as great anymore. And yeah, Payada doesn't want him for three. Um, I think that's that was always great about Napoleon as well. If you have to pay three for him, that neglects a lot of the bonuses that you get from him. The other guy gets his leader Ooh. for just one selection. He's thinking about he, it. Yeah, yeah he's his, his cursor shot up there for a second. <laughs> Another one for Deluxe. Oh. Yeah, we have a lot of chili leaders for Deluxe. Maybe he has a lot of uh, lot of friends. Or just a lot of fans with this uh, amazing play from last game. It's interesting here. You're, you're, you have Hameji up against Zitska in some ways. Yeah. Probably the best wonder against the best leader. Especially in, in 2 vs 2, I think. And 1 vs 1, um, Hameji Castle is the best wonder, probably. And then Jan Zitska is the best leader. Definitely from H1 and maybe from the whole everything. Um, so yeah, interesting decision. I think I would like uh, the image castle more because Jan Zitzka was too expensive. If, if it was the other way around, Zitzka for Jan and image castle for three, then of course not. But like this, it's probably the right decision. And yeah, Josh having the except, uh, exact same thoughts as me, being the best two player cards. And Alex can finally go for some food with that mm -hmm. rich land. At least he's stolen the engineering genius from Payada, so he can't get that um, image castle cheaply. Seems like he doesn't want to upgrade that irrigation yet. Also, no one wanting that monarchy. I guess they have a lot of laws and permits. So you have five selections already, so maybe you would like to wait for an H2 government, especially this late. They might be coming out soon. Maybe we'll have a Zitzka list game. A Zitzka list game? We are. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I guess Payala's problem is he doesn't have a tactic. Yep. And Zitzka without a tactic is just bad. Um, and then if you need, um, if you do an H2 tactic, farms are also not going to be great. Um, interesting that Deluxe didn't want Zitzka. And he is actually going to lose uh, Caesar soon. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, really interesting. So no Zitzka. Uh, so it is possible, guys, that Zitzka is not the best leader in every game. So in the original, how many times did Napoleon make it all the way through and not get picked? 
like in two verse two, yeah, I'd say like five percent, maybe, yeah. maybe something like that. So is Mike and the only one left at this point? Oh no, uh, we have Isabella, quick look, uh, Isabella and Columbus. Um, but the Lux doesn't have an doesn't have any cards for Columbus. Though he's drawn quite a lot with uh, with Caesar. And Payada goes for that again. The Leonardo, two alchemies. That's really a lot of uh, resources and science you're getting from that. And that iron, of course, he has as well. It looks like he will be discarding rich land. Maybe doesn't see a place for that at the moment. But he's definitely going to lose that one. At least Isabella shows up. I'm not sure if Deluxe wants to grab her for three. Yeah. Uh, looks like he has decided already. Goes for the St. Peter's and the Knights. And that's probably a good choice. He will be losing Caesar. Um, but I guess... Yeah, I guess it didn't turn out how, how we wanted. Yeah, he has corruption. There we go. And there's not a big reason to take Isabella for three. If you can get a next turn for one. And then you basically get back the civil action. So, not the greatest losing Caesar after the age. Um, especially because Caesar is not the one... One of those leaders that gives a lot. Something sort of like Kemurabi who always gives you civil actions. Or Aristotle who gives a lot of science. Caesar only gives, or has in this game, only given him uh, a few more milit politics actions, but no. Only one card played, so I didn't use that as well. So it just gave him a few cards that he's drawn. Which is okay, but not what you want from an HA leader um, for so long. And the development of civil life. And both of them have technologies in hand that they can use. Payala going for the education. And again, I think we saw that. I oh know that last game was someone else, but going for iron, alchemy, and irrigation. Yeah, I think really nice did that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think so too. But uh, Dalax was able to, de to beat that <laughs> last game. So maybe we see something similar like last game again. And after a, a couple of pretty heavily military games, we're not, it's pretty light, this one. Yeah. I think Payala is really happy with his uh, infrastructure, building that up. Going for, sign, going for iron first, and then for the alchemy, so getting a lot of science where he can use everything that he wants. Does he want those knights as well? He, his biggest problem is probably that he doesn't have tactic. So he definitely wants to draw one at some point. Probably needs some more military actions. But at least, I guess, in a few turns he will have finished his magic castle, so that should save him a little bit. And here he really, really wants to stay at um, three food production. So he doesn't want to increase population this turn, which will solve his uh, corruption. But like this, he's really trying not to do that. Speaking of tactics, how do you feel about dr drawing an H2 tactic being the most important thing in the game? The most important? Yeah. Ooh. I mean, as we like to say in Through the Age, it, is, it depends. Sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, a lot of it comes down to that often, so being prepared for all of those. Um, that's why a lot of people like Swordsman that much, because they give you the possibility to go for all of those tactics, or a lot of those. Yeah, a lot of it may come down to that. Um, but again, it depends on the uh, certain game that you're playing. Sometimes it doesn't matter at all. Sometimes it's decided before you can draw those if you have a strong H1 tactic. And sometimes there's very little military in H2 as well, so only the H3 military uh, tactics matter. But yeah, definitely one of the most important aspects of the game. 
And yeah, now Deluxe going for Michelangelo with that St. Peter's Basilica. And threatening military as well a little bit. So Payala's gonna have to concern himself with that. Can't finish your magic castle this turn. Could go for those knights though. And people are really happy with that uh, Michelangelo <laughs> and St. Peter's Basilica. Yeah. Looks <laughs> looks like Josh and the Mikey crew. And what is the best about that? You can transition into Pierre at some point. I mean, not really with the St. Peter's Basilica, but if we get um, like arenas as well, you're going to produce a lot of culture with Michelangelo and then try to go for Pierre. So Payada not drawing any cards. His military action is really lacking a little bit. But at least Lux revealed his tactic, so Payada can copy that next turn. Which would also mean again that he can't uh, can't draw cards. And again, can't go for a magic castle next turn. Mm -hmm. And there are new leaders. Napoleon especially might be important because it seems now that Payada has everything under control with his food, resource, and science production. He might look to use that to increase his strength a lot, and then Napoleon could be great. Deluxe playing really fast with that uh, Michelangelo, going for another knight. And upgrading. And then he can take one more card. Could even go for Forbidden City with Michelangelo. Or he yeah. could take Breakthrough. Which one would you like more? Taking Forbidden City and, I don't know, maybe Navigation? He goes for Breakthrough. But do you agree mm. with that? I I don't. I, I would have a hard time taking Forbidden City here, I think, for myself. Yeah. Um, so you can't, you can't dislike a breakthrough here, I think. There's not a lot of science in the game yet. Yeah, exactly. And the Forbidden City, this late, the civil action isn't most important anymore. And he has St. Um, Pete's, so exactly. Forbidden City is... So there. you don't need the other ability of that. And yeah, Payala gets uh, Napoleon for one, so yep. and that's great for him. Can go up to 16 strength. This is going to be very dangerous for our Michelangelo player. Take another look at the cards. Yeah, this seems really solid for Payala. And actually, he's going to grab away the team spots. Looks like he sees the value from Pierre. Um, and has to get some heavy faces at some point anyway. Also, he didn't draw a lot of cards, but he has drawn those wars territory two times. Looking dangerous. Yeah, those are some scary cards for Napoleon to be holding. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Pierre is set up Pog Champ. That definitely looks nice. Um, if Pierre's in the game, grabbing the team spots is always a nice option. Um, because there's only one of each arena. So being prepared to have that as a possibility. He seems really nice. And also, yeah, grabbing it away from Michelangelo. Uh, he could use that to increase strength a little bit. He doesn't really need it for the happy phases. Because he does have that uh, uh, St. Peter's Basilica. And then, yeah, taking a fission upgrade for the last iron upgrade, probably. And um, still hasn't built on his magic castle, so might might take some while. He was looking at the cards. I wonder if. What he was trying to, he was trying to, what what was he trying to figure out? I guess maybe keeping Eiffel Tower on on two, so Michelangelo. Sure. Michelangelo probably wants a new lead, a new wonder that he can grab. 
So having that stay on two might be what he looked at. Not sure. Maybe making sure that cannon couldn't get taken away as well. Yeah, maybe that. Sure, that could also be... Yeah, maybe that more than the wonder. And I guess it would be really greedy um, of the Lux to take Eiffel Tower together with um, yeah, the rest that he has. He has already at six culture production, so Eiffel Tower is really expensive. He doesn't have a lot of resources. But he probably wants to take a lot, what, new wonder soon to really use Michelangelo. Coal showed up. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think about a coal and railroad pick here? I mean, that would be uh, the only thing that he can do then. Yeah. Would leave him at corruption. Lose cannon. Let's go for coal next turn. It's going to be quite a while until he, can, uh, until he can go for that. Also, Robert Pierre. Yeah, that seems really good. If he can grab one of those. Um, government forms. I think both of them are still there. Things about coal. Interesting. Hmm. Let's use that wave of nationalism. Doesn't want to give up... Um, doesn't want to give up his mic yet. Yeah, this game, this turn is not looking very clean. No. Just might be worth it to pick up that coal. Doesn't have to take Transcontinental Railroad. Can maybe take that next turn. Yeah. I'd be a little nervous. Then, to... Ooh. <laughs> ooh, going down to one. Does he really want to go to What's he trying to do? Just... Draws. trying out something. I mean, he has to be really afraid huh. um, of aggressions, maybe. So he's really struggling to find a turn that would suit him. But I don't think going up, going down to one bronze is what you really want. So he just takes everything back again. But he seems to really like that uh, destroying his two minds thing. So, and he wants to keep Mike. I mean, there's not. I mean, Piata only has two military actions, right? No. Yeah. Does he just have? No, he must have at least three. I am with yeah with Napoleon. He has one more. I wonder how. How threatened do you need to feel here for a green? I guess not that much. Well. But he really wants to be stronger. Do we know which cards he has played? But I don't think going down to one bronze is gonna be what carry what carries you to the win. That no cards in hand, so no resources from reserves or anything. So yeah, really expensive. At least he can maybe go for Republic next turn with the revolution from Pierre, uh, from Robert Pierre. And looks like Payana wants to be stronger again. So finally we arrive at that arms race. Um, problem is Payana is producing five resources and the Lux is producing one. So I think I know who I favor here. I guess uh, Deluxe's plan is to go down in resource production, then grab a new government form, and then he can finally uh, take resources from his civil actions. And right. it looks like Piyada's thinking about not going for cannons. And he hovers over the Republic, so maybe he wants to grab away the Republic. It is an interesting choice what you what you take away here. 
Speaking of H2 tactics, I, we haven't seen one, right? We don't have one yet, nope. It certainly changes like the dynamics. There's one. Right after he didn't There's take one, cannons. Not, yeah, right after. <laughs> not after disrespecting the cannons. He gets punished by it's throwing sort of like, that. Yeah, that's what you get. The game really likes to taunt you in those ways. I mean, Green is now playing. He could. He takes coal. He could also take the railroad. Um, doesn't go for the railroad. It's going to be really expensive to go for that. Can go for coal and upgrade that next turn. Still going to be really, really hard to get his resource production going again. He just took reserves for three, right? Yeah. yeah. So, as I said, that's probably his plan. Taking cards with his uh, civil actions, he has eight now. So he can take a lot of cards. Maybe he doesn't need as much uh, resource production. But yeah, Payada going going ham with his military. Still doesn't want to finish his uh, Imagi Castle. But if he yeah. takes Engineering Genius, he can go for that next turn. Definitely think he has to grab that, yeah. That's pretty nice for him getting that. Mm-hmm. And going up to 27 as well, it's really threatening wars at this point. Talk about disrespecting Napoleon discarded Napoleonic army. <laughs> yeah. He just got rid of his whole, his army. An automatic player here. Really, really sad to see that. Uh, again, green goes for one. Okay, goes for one bronze and one coal. Can take rich land. Oh. Tirith's uh, tactic with taking a lot of cards is working. It seems like he wants to, the revolutionary idea. Yeah, that's also going to be really nice. He's not producing mm -hmm. a lot of science. And draws the classic army. But loses two yellow cubes to the wall. And Pajara has one more where, where that came from. But he might get surprised by that um, by the classic army. That's really nice to have that in your hand. So he's going to declare the war. It. And that might, yeah, I guess with the strate strategy, there's no way to really punish him. But he's going to lose his magic castle. So Zitzka was discarded. Um, the <laughs> Himachi Castle was taken but not finished. So, what kind of game is yeah, this? <laughs> I just talked about how, how these two cards are the strongest, probably, and then Piada discards the one and uh, loses the other. So, yeah. Not sure about my ability to talk you through these games if they just oh. do something else. But now he does. He's, he does. Fixing, it. He's fixing it. Yeah. This means he can grab strategy, <clears throat> but not finish it and not go for it. Might be his plan. Can't sacrifice a unit with the war, with the Imagic Castle, if he wants to do that. Yeah, definitely think I like the Imagic Castle more than strategy. And as I said, that he goes for the strategy instead. So you like I mean, he's at zero production and 11 culture, so we might have another game where Deluxe tries to save himself with um, with Gandhi. Right. But I guess that's also going to be hard against Napoleon and strategy. So he's going to lose another three yellow cubes. Steadly is missing some resources to go for one more knight and uh, one more swordsman. Actually, I don't think you play the classic army at this point. Yeah, you don't really want to give it to him. Yeah. It only gives you a plus two strength because you had uh, three medieval armies before that. So keeping that in hand to not give him information might be important. Maybe. That means where Piada gets one more yellow cube from his war. 
how interesting the developed territory. Hmm. Yeah, I guess Payada can still bid for that. Nope, he passes. He passes, so Lux has to take that. And now I guess he might play the uh, classic army to not lose too many yellow cubes. Still. Still rebuilds those. <laughs> and takes another revolutionary idea. Yeah, I guess. Doesn't use his rich land this turn, can go for that next turn maybe. At least Pegada is not drawing a lot of cards. So stealing three yellow cubes is Pegada now. Doesn't have wars in hand anymore. So he could go for that aggression if he really wants to punish green for living. So here you're in uh, a situation again where we have St. Pete's and a happiness problem. Yeah. I mean, at least he can easily fix that, just build another religion. Um, yep. So there's that. He has food for one more population, so yeah. He can stabilize. It's not like he's going down heavily. And so many yellow cards in hand. Revolutionary idea breakthrough, urban growth, frugality, and rich land. That's really nice. And the crusades as well. Um, so culture probably, yeah, looking very one-sided. So there is still a chance for green if Payada doesn't get any military actions. I guess he takes, yeah, he takes communism. Payada knows exactly what his plan has to be. He has to go for a war. For that he needs some military actions. Constitutional monarchy is enough for that. And he can go for that next turn. So that's going to be really nice for him. It's, it's, it's interesting not finishing the um, Meiji Castle leaves his engineering genius for one of these wonders. Yeah. And also it's cheaper to take something. If you don't finish your wonders... You don't have to pay extra selections for that. So that is a great strategy by him. Oh, we should probably thank the players for having different colors again. That's yeah, helpful. that's really good. Really nice. And there's Pierre. We have Pierre. And Payada is in position to take him um, if he doesn't want to go for those wars. But also Gandhi. Um, so let's see if Lux tries to save himself with Gandhi again. And I, Refmark, you asked how do we cast this. Both of the players share their screen. So we can swap it in between uh, both of their perspectives. So yeah, we definitely need the cooperation from the players, but um, that works really nicely. So there's Gandhi now, um, leaves the Lux at two military actions. Uh, that's not a lot. Once those computers, okay, takes everything back and forth again. <laughs> And again, one science <laughs> and goes for the. Ah, I can go for that communism. Yeah, that's nice. And um, probably, is, of course, going to be happy faces. But as we said, he has that St. Peter's. Maybe he can take Gandhi as well. Yeah. Can even play him if he really wants to. Great thing about communism is it only costs one science, and uh, that's uh, as a revolution. 
That's so cheap for revolution. Yeah. Especially with Pierre. Iris, Robert Pierre. I always confuse those names. With Robert Pierre, it's really nice to get that. And really early, so a lot of civil actions, or more, more so military actions that he gets from that. Just trying <clears> to figure <throat> out what to do with his actions here. Huh? Yeah. So it looks like he doesn't want to grab Gandhi yet. And yeah, we will see if Payala wants to get that Pierre. Yeah, this is a uh, reminiscent of the the last game. <laughs> yeah, very Deluxe's much. Deluxe's last game. He didn't take Gandhi. <clears throat> the other yeah. player kind of decided to not do the war, and then he got into Gandhi. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Payala doesn't have the wars yet. Yeah. And. Yeah, we're looking at his screen. He's at zero culture reduction still. He has to find a way to score some culture. But wars, that's pretty hard. And uh, with Pierre, that's pretty easy. But can you make enough? And the good thing about Pierre is you're not, he's not getting away from the wars. I guess if he plays him in... Yeah, I should definitely play him, I guess. Yeah, really thinking hard. That's the problem if you don't draw walls. And that you... And there's a limbo. Okay, he wants to go for... That's one way to make culture. That's one way. Seven culture production. Really nice. I'm not super convinced that that is better than Pierre. But I guess might be. They're probably still too... Um, journalism is left. Problem is, he's not at the most uh, resource production. And like yeah. this, he's only at six culture production, and Green is still at seven. Oh, they're both at, th at seven. Um, he doesn't have enough resource to finance more movies and more journalism. He doesn't even have uh, architecture or engineering. So, I'm going for those cheap, uh, going for those cheap um, arenas. In my opinion, is better going with Pierre. Also, he doesn't have to develop that. Then he could go for constitutional monarchy. Maybe that he thinks that's too late to go for that and wants to go for democracy instead. So yeah, he takes everything back again. This I think I would like constitutional monarchy. He goes for the classic army, so he still wants to go for wars. He has a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, it seems... Uh, assuming he can draw war, it seems we're likely he can close the gap this way. Yeah. I guess with, with Fleming, you'd be hoping for the right yellow card in an early multimedia. The, yeah. I mean, But if you go for movies this turn, you can't go for multimedia next turn. Yeah. I, I, I am not a fan of this. <laughs> and yeah, he's he struggling be either. <laughs> as well. Yeah. It seems like he wants to copy the tactic before losing Napoleon. And he decides to go for those movies. Yeah, it's a tough. And now he thinks really hard about if he really wants to do that. He has a good PR setup, I think. He needs a lot of resources uh, for his um, space flight that he already has. Yep. So going for movies and multimedia seems really expensive. So I'd rather go for those cheap arenas. Can go for two or three of those. Also produces a lot of culture. And then the yeah. eight, extra eight from Pierre. But seems like that what that's what he wants to go for. Very interesting. I mean, you can still go for wars if you want to. So just need one more knight. <laughs> and again, this is tough. Like everything. It's an important turn. This is very important. 
he had the Pierre in the beginning. I think that was the right move. Don't think Fleming is the way to go. He, he's only matching up the culture that... <laughs> and now he does go for Pierre. Maybe he's listening, so, guys. He, he even with Pierre, Pierre, though, he's still, he's still going to need a war, right? Yeah, I mean, but I, those arenas are going to help with that. Yeah. And you have enough resources to go for wonders. And yeah, maybe keeps Napoleon for a little longer. Yeah, he's really running out of time. Has thought like almost five minutes about this turn now. Yeah. Really complicated turn. This is probably, there's always this one turn where you have to decide yep. uh, as the stronger player, especially without wars. Am I going to wait for that? What am I going to do if I don't draw the war? He decides to keep Napoleon for now. And not copy the tactic. Interesting, wants to draw cards. And there he has the wars. Yeah, he got him. And now Deluxe can take Gandhi. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe he goes for Gandhi now. It's interesting. Now he's he's put to the choice too. I think Piotto is looking at the possibility that he could go to Sid Meier. Um, with that computer. Uh, maybe maybe yeah. not. It looked like he might have been, but... Yeah, Gandhi makes sense here. Yeah, going up with the military theory, it's going to be really hard for Pajada to get more military actions. Can't go for this constitutional monarchy, so he will have enough to go for a war if he doesn't have to prepare that. I guess some more turns left. He could next turn go and copy the tactic, go for that um, go for that last night. Maybe okay. we'll take patriotism so he can also go for he, air forces. Uh, he can't. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Piata is going to try to infiltrate, take out yeah. Gandhi because I think he doesn't quite have enough to defend. I think he's one short. He has a lot of military actions, but um, I guess that There's might be Force. what he has to do. Air Force has showed up too. Yeah, it seems like he wants to go for a really big military push next turn. He doesn't know that Green, Green would just need one defend card from H3, right, to defend mm -hmm. against that yeah. aggression. I guess it's he could try it. Here. He didn't do anything with this politics at this turn anyway. So maybe he's playing too fast now. Um, maybe he should think about that politics action again. Use that infiltrate. He doesn't need the two military actions anyway, so he can do everything the same. Try out that uh, aggression first. I guess he's, he needs small military actions. Draw cards, but for what really? Maybe for the impacts. So how does he set up? He doesn't take patriotism. Mm, not quite enough. Yeah, it's five military actions, right? Uh, so he wouldn't draw cards, but he could still do it. Oh, he was trying to find enough science to get air forces, I believe. Yeah, without taking the revolutionary idea, I guess. Yeah. Go for air forces at this turn, not go for the constitutional monarchy, but then he can't declare the war next turn. So how, what is his plan really? Just copy this and then he can't infiltrate, declare the war next turn. Infiltrate and then do the war? Does he have enough time? Yeah, probably. Seems risky. So yeah, another really interesting game with uh, Deluxe being behind quite a lot with the military and going for Gandhi, saving him again quite a lot. So can Green defend against, can he set himself up to be able to defend against those uh, and against that aggression? 
Or can he set up the board so Pajada won't have the time to go for an infant raid mm -hmm. and the war? He takes a lot of cards. Yeah, he does exactly that. I'd like to see the modern infantry taken as well. There's 13 cards left. Um, I think it might get close with the cards. I think if Green really wants to, he can finish the turn, uh, the, the age next turn. I wonder in so, this in this situation how how easy is it to to have infiltrate in mind as deluxe here as an option. I mean, with the way that Payada played, I think there's only one way you're gonna lose this if you're green, and that is wars. There's no other way. You can't outproduce you in culture. Because looking so at it, has... like there's, I guess, I guess Payada could do a hybrid war still anyway see so yeah to... that he can do yeah so let's see what he will take he can't he can set himself up to be able to go for air forces and then with, with reserves and patriotism, he can go for one more army and air forces, probably, if he really wants to. So, yeah, I guess Payada will have that... Um, actually taking one, that interesting. Payada will have that um, aggression next turn go through. And then, if he goes, can go for another war, which I really doubt. There will be six cards gone this turn, so it will be at... Uh, yeah, there won't be a chance that he can go no. for another wall. Nope. It's going to be too late for that. And a bit of culture for green as well, again, like last game. And progress is amazing as well. Really, really interesting. Gdax again, with the... He was down to one bronze at some point. He was. And had two wars of a territory on on himself, but with that denying of military actions, I guess Payada didn't didn't think about that too much. There he is in infiltrate with only seven cards left, so no way that uh, he can go for a war next turn as well. Yeah, this is not gonna end pretty. Yeah, sabotage the Empire State actually. He has that one now that he can go for. He can go for some Red and Circuses or rather the team sports. I really think Payada should have gone for that constitutional monarchy when he had the chance. That would have given him enough military actions to still go for a war. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this looks great for Deluxe again. Really surprised by him. And all the fans in the chat really, really liking what they see. Yes, the fan support is pushing him through. And, uh,. Looks like Deluxe is not in the game. <laughs> well, that's a way to lose still. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he does have all of his, or a lot of his reserve, anyway. Yeah. That's good. So that's going to be interesting. Really don't want to wait too long for this. Hope that he yeah. plays something. I'm really excited if. There he is back. Really nice. Sees what Red is doing. Yeah, Payada missed his, missed his chances. Should have gone for what he did um, before this turn, like the first iteration that he had. Go for that constitutional monarchy, maybe even the infiltrate before that. Um, didn't want to risk it, maybe, 
but I guess he didn't see that he wouldn't have enough time to go for infiltrate and the war. And actually can finish United Nations this turn even. And go for the input of progress with that. So this is going to be... Looks like this might be a very big sweep for for Deluxe, actually. And go, can go for that United Nations. Use that input of culture. He's going to score so much from wow. that. Can play that next turn as well. Wow. Looking great for him. It's great to see United Nations work out that way. I love when that happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let's say, let's say if the culture war was a fifty-point swing, we just estimate fifty. Let's see if that would would have been enough. And yeah, I guess. Finishes out. That, and it would have meant that Gandhi would have been gone a little bit earlier, so he wouldn't have bruised as much. But yeah, definitely point to be made that at zero or almost zero culture production um, one war can sometimes be not enough so what does Payada do here can go for one movies now and finish now can't go for both and finish the space flight so he has to do that also not the greatest wonder for him so really everything falling apart for him. Yeah, this finishing the game at 64 culture is not great here. Great position, I think, but Summer wasn't able to transfer those military points into science. And yeah, Deluxe really being the survivalist of this yeah. game in the last one as well really going down in military going down in almost every production but producing those uh, those culture and with gandhi staying afloat yeah that that so, that one that one turn in h3 was uh really interesting it was really interesting to see you go see it go back and forth yeah, he was really struggling there. He had to decide. At some point, he was down to, I don't know, one minute or something. Didn't want to get yeah. all out of reserve. So I think if he had more time, I guess Piata often plays a lot of async games. That also is a big factor often. Yeah. Um, so maybe he ran out of time to think everything through. Didn't find the perfect solution to his problem. And then he was punished for that. And he says yeah. so himself, he was in time pressure and made a blunder. Yeah, it often can just, you just have to overlook one thing that you don't see, and then it's the game. And the culture, variety, progress. Yeah, pretty clean game. So, yeah, as we said before, war over culture for 50. Might have not, not been enough, actually. Might not have. Would have been super close. Whew. Yeah, but still a really amazing game. Really yeah. thrilling I mean, to the end. Despite the score, that was a very close game. Yeah. I mean, it was basically missing one or two military actions, and it could have gone the other way. Yeah. That is really, really close. Um, but an amazing finish for the tournament. Yeah. So congratulations was... to Deluxe and all the fans in the chat who... Um, really pushed him through, I think. All right. And the next, so the king of scrappy defenses, really amazing. <laughs> Just did that two times in a row. What was the score again? Do you have that? Uh, one hundred sixty-two against ninety something. Ninety-four. I'm just gonna say one hundred sixty-two against ninety-four. I think it was fifty-two. Okay. Yeah. Chad is gonna let right. us know. Someone will tell me if I'm wrong. Wow. So Deluxe is the winner of the first uh, Super Blitz tournament. That was, I, I, I'll tell you, that last game, it was tense for me. Yeah, <laughs> was, super tense. I was on the edge of my seat through, through that. That was really exciting. 
Cool. Well, I, don't, I don't have any. Um, we don't. We don't have any fancy end screens or anything here. Um, no, sadly not. <laughs> just this bracket. But that was, that was great. Yeah, uh, definitely. Deluxe is in the chat. Yeah, uh, welcome, Good job, man. Deluxe. And yes, <laughs> the age of peace. Man. You are a peaceful man, and a peaceful winner. And what else would? Really well done. Yeah, great games. Well played, very much. Well, I guess we could just uh, re chat for a minute. Yeah, sure. We can talk a little bit with them. Fiyada's also here. Really close, man. Uh, just as we said, missing a few military actions, something like that. And that one turn where you went down to reserves it was really exciting to see. You're going to all the possible uh, options, uh, sadly not finding the best one in the end, not being able to go for that war. But really exciting to see nonetheless. Yeah, lots of uh, leaving Napoleon was interesting uh, as well. Very bad idea. Yeah, I mean, but it's in interesting the end... though how well Robespierre worked out though. I mean, without Napoleon, it would, would have been very different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If uh, if uh, Napoleon gave one more military action, game would have looked uh, completely different. So yeah. that nerf yeah. they did. Some people said it wasn't impactful enough, but yeah, in this game, decided between winning and losing. A winner interview, huh? Technically, we could do it if Deluxe is up for it. You could just invite him to our Discord. Yeah. Hey, Deluxe, you wanna you wanna you wanna talk to the, your fans? Yeah, we were talking about that taking Fleming. I don't think taking Fleming would have been best in that position. You needed a lot of resources for the um, for the um, theater. Then would you probably wanted that uh, journalism or the multimedia as well? And you had already that um, uh, that wonder, the space flight. So you needed a lot of resources. And then going, you didn't have architecture or engineering. Yeah. Hey, uh... Okay, are we all here? Yeah. Cool. There you go. There is the winner. Here's the winner. Uh, cool. You want so to talk to your it? fans? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I have some fans because I play a lot of board games online, and so there were a bunch of friends of mine playing uh, while watching. Um, I guess most of them also play TTA, but not this tournament. Um, I really liked the um, Napoleon versus Robespierre. I thought maybe I could survive a decent amount of aggression if I got Robespierre in Republic, but the, after the Second War, I was really on some uh, crazy lines to survive. I'm, I'm not sure what other people thought. I, I thought round two was was uh, crazy too with so many colonies. Yeah, the, yeah, the even closer finish with the like three or four points in the end. That was yeah, I needed the game. Nobel Prize to win, so that was a that was a much more wacky game. Um, oh. I thought round two, to be honest, I was happier with how I played. It was just is I, I that's very hard to beat. Yeah. There but, they were both. I mean, they were both super exciting games and, and good finishes. It was very fun. Yeah, I really like this tournament. I hope I uh, get invited back to another one of these. It was uh, it was a lot of fun to play a tournament of TTA that, um, you know, most of the tournaments are really really long, like <laughs> weeks or months. So this was this was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the the winner has to get invited back, so I I think your spot is safe. <laughs> yeah. To defend the title, man. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, yeah. Um, cool. Well, thanks for. I, I also like. Uh... Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, sorry. I was also going to say uh, thanks for uh, the two of you streaming and stuff. It's uh, it's a lot of fun to watch um, or even to chat. Sometimes I'm in DJ's uh, chat on Twitch. It's a lot of fun. Nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. It only works with the with all of you guys, all in the chat. Without you, it wouldn't work. So, And the players, of course. A lot of people thank. It's a great community um, and really amazing. Yep, cool. For sure. Well, well thank you. thanks for joining us. Thanks for playing. Thanks for your help as well, getting the tournament set up. Like you, you, were, you were helping, um, you know, test some of the stuff. Also, big thanks to Crush You, Josh, um, Piata, DJ Parson for for hosting. Everybody helped get this all set up. So it was, it was great. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay, cool. Uh, I am I am a little sad I didn't get to play some of, I guess I got to play St. Peter's Basilica. I guess that's my plug. I think it's still the best wonder <laughs> e even with the nerf. So that was good. Yeah. The 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 chat was very excited when you grabbed Mike and and St. Pete's together. They got yeah, they a little excited. Going wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. All right. Well, thank you. We'll we'll talk okay, to you soon. Cool. Bye. Okay, peace. I don't suppose uh Payata wants to do the runner-up chat. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it going. Let's see. What does he think? No pressure. Yeah. While we're waiting, guys, um, if you're watching this, um, please follow us. I'll follow through, uh, play TDA on this channel. Um, and also on YouTube and everything. Really great that you made this possible, man. Really amazing in this first tournament. Hopefully more to come. Yes, and, hopefully. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you guys can also check out my channel. I guess a lot of you already do. Um, Hanberg was kind enough to link all of those in the bottom of uh, the screen. So you can definitely check that out. A lot more through the ages to come. I think this community is only starting to really grow, especially with all of the new players from the recent sale and then the tournaments, the live streams, this tournament, um, more things to come that should really improve our community even more while it is already really, really beautiful. Yes, definitely. There's um raced did a stream this morning. You can you can check that out in the the Reddit. There's a link. It was uh, streamed on YouTube. Uh, oh yeah, right. I saw that. That that was great. Um, and there's several YouTube channels you can go check out. Yeah, they're they're linked below. So check it out. We'll we'll look to do another one of these. Check out Payata's tournaments. There's a Facebook group. Um, I'll I'll put the I'll put a link to that down below. But most of you probably know about that. But check that out. Um, he'll probably still let you play in them, even if you beat him in this tournament. So don't worry about it. And there's only one who beat him this tournament, right? <laughs> yeah, there's so only one. Maybe Deluxe will get kicked out of the other tournaments, who knows? Um, yeah. By accident, of course. Yeah, it's technical um, difficulty, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thanks, everybody. We will catch you next time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, DJ Parson. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Come. Yeah, talk to you soon, guys. Hope you have a nice night. Have a good one. Bye.